as you all know, we are quickly approaching the trade deadline, which I believe is October 31st. So it's literally right around the corner. And there have been a lot of hypothetical trades that have been getting put out there by different people. But this specifically right here, this is a trade that I can actually get behind, especially when it comes to this player, that being Washington Commanders, Chase Young. Now, before, this is not the first time that there have been hypothetical trades put out there about the Ravens acquiring Chase Young. Um, because if I take you back a couple of months ago, and we talked about it on here, there was a hypothetical trade that got put out there that the Ravens would acquire Chase Young, but they would have to give up Patrick Queen. And I was like, oh, no, I, I do not and would not want that to happen. I want Patrick Queen on this team, especially this year. Beyond this year, I would love it, but I know business is business, so I can't necessarily expect it. But we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But now they have sort of fixed the trade offer for Chase Young. Let's read it. It says, hypothetical trade, and this was from uh, PFS Brad Spielberg. He said, the Ravens would acquire Chase Young, uh, but the Commanders, they will get a 2024 third round pick and a 2025 third round pick. So I'm like, oh man, that, that's it? Oh, oh yeah, go ahead. I, I, I will put that one through all day. But see, while that trade is nice, while that trade is good, um, and, and Chase Young, he maybe he could be something serious in the league. Yeah, he, he's solid. He's a solid player. But me, I would much rather prefer production than projection because see with Chase Young and we know he was hurt a lot over the past year and a half and whatnot and this year he's been solid he got three sacks um so nothing crazy not bad but not great but I would much rather somebody who's producing right here right now and somebody who's been producing I don't think the Ravens need to acquire somebody not calling Chase Young a project but he's not there yet I, I think you want somebody who's ready right here, right now. So um, I take you to Daniil Hunter from the Minnesota Vikings. Like, think about that. Daniil Hunter, he's, he's been producing. Like, this year, he got eight sacks. This year, he, he got eight sacks, man. So he's already putting up numbers, and he has been putting up numbers for years. This ain't nothing new for him. He, he got 79 career sacks. over. The, let's just go over the past couple of years. This year, again, we only been through, what, six games? He got six, eight sacks already. Last year, he had 10 and a half sacks. 2021, he had six sacks. I believe that's when he, uh, oh, no, 2020 is when he had the neck injury, I believe. So he missed that year. Uh, but 2019, he had 14 and a half. 2018, he had 14 and a half. 2017, he had seven. So he's continuously produced numbers. And, and it's one thing. It's one thing to just get pressure on somebody. And pressure is where it starts, but he's a closer. And the Baltimore Ravens could use as many closers as they could possibly get because we got the pressure people like Jadavian Clowney's a pressure person. And he's starting to become a closer better and better every week, which is great. Uh, Kyle Vinoy, hey, he just got here and, and he's getting there as well. Adafi away. He's a pressure guy. Um, but now if you could add Daniel Hunter to the. Oof, oof, I would love that. I, I, I would love that. And would, would that even would that give the Ravens too much firepower at pass rush? No, I don't think so. You can never have too much firepower on a football team. And you, you, you think about the, the, the packages and whatnot. You think about the, the relief. Like, say, for instance, Daniel Hunter, defensive end. Uh, you got him out there. Maybe you got Jadavian Clowney on the other side and whatnot. And then it's like, all right, y'all, y'all take a break real quick. Y'all get a breather. And then you could have a Dafe away. You could have Kyle Vinoy. You could mix it up. You have Jadavian Clowney, a Dafe away, the Daniel Hunter, a Dafe away, the Neil Hunter, Kyle Vinoy. The possibilities are endless. Um, so I, even though the, the Chase Young trade for the two third round picks over the next two years, oh, that's wonderful. Going for Daniel Hunter will be much better because I think he will be a much bigger factor. And speaking of factor. Let's hear a word from our sponsor. It's the wonderful month of October. So it's fall season. And what better way to relish the best of autumn with fall flavors? For a limited time only, hearty, comforting meals that feature seasonal veggies like cranberry pecan chicken and apple Dijon pork chops. Ready in just two minutes. They'll satisfy all of your fall cravings during this busy season without all of the hassle. Or if you're looking for calorie conscious meals during this busy time of the year, try Factor's delicious, dietitian approved, calorie smart meals with around or less than 550 calories per serving. Even have smoothies and juices at a perfect snack option. Factor makes life so easy because they cut down trips to the grocery store and they cut down cooking as well so there's more time to take all that fresh air in from outside. And speaking of easy, let me show you just how easy it is to make a Factor meal.
That's it. That's all it took. But how can you get started with your Factor meals? Well, let me tell you. Just head to Factor75.com or click the link below and use code ENGRAVEN50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. Again, just head to Factor75.com or click the link below and use code ENGRAVEN50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. Oh yeah, if I didn't tell you, this is an episode of questions from subscribers. And the first question came from my guy Javo. Speaking of trades, he said, is there anybody on this team you can see getting traded for another player? By the deadline if so who are some candidates oh that is a really really good question um i hope not i don't want it to be so but we do know business and i would slightly say patrick queen but it's like with the if you're the ravens uh it, it's so tough man because he's playing so great you can't give that up man you you can't trade him but you know the ravens like somebody flashed some draft picks in front of eric DaCosta face he's gonna be oh give me but now you uh, with, with patrick queen i would say it's a small possibility but it, it it should not go down it shouldn't happen at all even if you gotta ride this thing out what and worst case scenario you can't come to a contract agreement with him you gotta just take that third round comp pick man you you that you gotta just take it man because you're getting an amazing Patrick Queen right now. You're getting an amazing Roquan Smith. You have such an amazing inside linebacker duo. Uh, they've been making plays together. They've been making plays individually. They've been just playing out of this world. So you cannot give that up. As, as tempting as I know somebody want to throw some draft picks in front of EDC. But EDC, don't take the bait for PQ. Um, so I could see Devin DuVernay, possibly. Um... But at the same time, I wouldn't want him to get traded either because with all wide receivers, they, they could be so shaky with health sometimes, man. Shaw Baby missed a couple games here and there. Odell Beckham Jr., he in the game, then he come out the game and whatnot. So I, I wouldn't even want him to get traded. I know a lot of people are like, oh, man, he's a, he got this high salary and he don't even be bringing the kicks out of the end zone. I mean, half of them kicks be, be going out of the back of the end zone. These kickers got stronger feet than ever now, man. Nowadays, they be sending it, man. Um, so, no, nah, I wouldn't. Cause, but Devin Duvernay, I think, would be a possibility especially because Keaton Mitchell is there. Now, with John Harbaugh, especially in a pivotal year like this, would he trust relegating all the return duties to an undrafted rookie free agent in the middle of the season? That part makes me hesitant that they would trade Devin DuVernay and give Keaton Mitchell those responsibilities. Um, but other than that, I just, uh, maybe one of the tight ends, um, Charlie Kola, maybe. Isaiah likely, uh, he just ain't, they ain't been using him. He ain't been involved at all. So I could see him as a candidate. I know for, for some people that may sound real crazy, but either one of those two, Isaiah likely or Charlie Kola, um, as a candidate. Uh, but yeah, that's all I could think of off the top of my head. Um, th that's possible trade candidates for the Baltimore Ravens player wise. Next question came from my guy Dominic, who's been a patron for 10 months and appreciate you, my guy. He said, What's up, Engraven? Hope you and the fam have a wonderful day. After seeing Marcus Williams go down again this season with an injury, even though it's minor, should we be concerned that this may be a trend? Oof, I would hope not. I would really hope not because, and I don't think so right now, but. It has been a trend since he's been with the Ravens. Last year, he missed a huge chunk of time with an injury. I think what is a fractured forearm, I think. Now, this year, uh, he missed time with a torn pec. And, I mean, well, with a partially torn pec, whatever it is, a pec injury. And, that hey, at least, uh, at least he's been coming back. Like, he's had some major injuries, but he's been coming back. Uh, maybe this year a little bit too early, but he's been coming back. And now he got the hamstring injury. And we'll see, man. I, I really hope not. Hopefully, hopefully it's just fluky stuff because before this, he was not an injury-prone player at all. Uh, but he come to the Ravens, and all these injuries start piling up. Hey, it, maybe it's just coincidence. But anyway, he said, and shout out to Geno Stone. I know he has been stepping up big time um, for this team in Williams' absence. But do you see him leaving in free agency since we already have Williams signed and have Hamilton? Yeah, for sure. For sure. I wouldn't want him to, but he's gone. Geno Stone is gone. He ain't coming back because he will get much more money from somewhere else for playing a safety position. In his passing league, yeah, Geno Stone's out of there, man. Uh, he said, I would like to keep him, but it is a business, and Ravens love them comp picks. I mean, they yeah, they love any picks that they can get. But, yeah, um, yeah, G Geno Stone, similar to how I feel about Patrick Queen, um, they, if they're going to cash in as much as they possibly can, the biggest deal is going to come from somewhere outside of the Baltimore Ravens. I would love for both of them to stay. I actually think that Patrick Queen, he has a higher chance of staying than Geno Stone. And I think that Patrick Queen's deal would be higher than Geno Stone's deal. I know they play two different positions, but still. Um, who's it? Matabike, 
that's a tricky one right there too. I think the Ravens really want to keep Matabike. Like, so I think they really want to keep Matabike. I think they really want to keep Patrick Queen. I think they already know it's a foregone conclusion that Geno Stone is out of there. This is just my opinions. I don't know nothing. I ain't heard nothing from nothing. Y'all know I'm an NFL outsider. But, yeah, that, that's just my own personal opinion. I think they really want Matabike to stay. And they really want PQ as well. But with Geno Stone, they like, all right, uh, Kyle, Kyle Hamilton, first-round pick. Marcus Williams invested a lot of money in him. Are we going to pay a third safety? No, they ain't going to do that. Um, so Geno Stone is out of here. So th this is his farewell tour uh, to the Baltimore Ravens. Next question came from Hard Heavy. He said, Engraven, answer me this. Why are the Ravens so conservative play calling wise when they have a lead of 10 points or more? Teams like the Bills in Miami, they are going to make you play for four quarters and run the score up. The Ravens constantly go away from what was working and getting touchdowns. It happened again in the second half in Tennessee, but I noticed. Todd corrected it quickly, something Giro never did. I can't say Giro never did that because um, there were plenty of times where they would actually run the score up, well, in 2019. Um, but after that, like, it's, it's hard to, to, to remember. After 2019, it's hard to remember when the Ravens blew somebody out. Like, I, I, I pose that question to you. And I know, I mean, while you're watching this video, you can easily Google, Google it real quick or Google the, the, the record and whatnot. But when's the last time the Ravens really blew somebody out? Are you going to say the Browns? I mean, you could go with that. What was that score? 28 7? Something like that. I forgot what that score was in the Browns game. But when the last time Raven like really like blew somebody out the water and it wasn't even close at all? I don't remember. Not to say that it didn't happen, but it's just harder to recollect those games because they happen so far and few. Um, but yeah, Ravens, they have been conservative. It's like, yeah, they get these two score leads and they're like, all right, we're good. We're chilling. All right, let, 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 let's rest now. They, they can't do that. They, they got to really. Turn this thing up, man, and hopefully they will uh, f from this point on and forward going on this season. Next question came from my guy, Enonic. What's up, Enonic? Appreciate you. He said, uh, the missing element. Hey, Engraven, hope all is well with you and the fam. Uh, just real quick, I, I really appreciate all y'all when y'all be saying that, that you hope everything is all good and well with the fam and whatnot. Because that, that, I appreciate that a lot, man. Uh, because there could be times, not even just with me, but if you're telling that to somebody and things may be great, but sometimes things may not be so great and they just need that encouragement. So I really appreciate y'all saying that, man. Uh, anyway, he said, you know, just watch your post game thoughts after the Ravens dominating win over the Titans. Oh, he, next to dominating, he put a laughing emoji. Uh, he said, I wanted to see if you're seeing what I see. To me, the missing element of this offense is Greg Roman. Maybe not Giro, but rather the excitement and explosiveness of his run game offense. Oh, you know what? I think it was um, I think it was my guy Nitrate who said it in the live stream the other day. I think maybe during the Titans game, he said, oh, man, this, this offense is missing Greg Roman in the run game. Um, but, yeah, we um, – We've seen some big plays here and there. Not many, though. They're far and few. They'll grind it out or whatnot. Uh, but, yeah, it's not. You ain't really seen it. And Ravens, I think, really, Ravens really been kind of lacking in the big plays overall. They've been a big play here and there, like the, the Nelson Aguilar one or the Odell Beckham Jr. And that, that's yak plays, and we want yak plays, too. Um, but as far as the big plays, the big chunk plays, Ravens have been lacking a bit. But anyway, he said, if you remember... Uh, the Jackson Fives, the 50-point-plus in Miami, the late-game comebacks. Each of these successes were based on the excitement and effectiveness of the run game, Lamar's passing ability, as well as his mobility. This run game does not excite or scare me, and the offense isn't peaking too early. <laughs> it's either anemic or still in the vault. I thought this monkey offense was supposed to unleash the passing game, but not at the cost of the run game. What are your thoughts? Um... And he also said, uh, keep up the great work. Love watching the channel grow and the engraving world expand. Uh, appreciate that. And he said, question, are you taking questions from subs on the other channel? Oh, no, we, we ain't even close to that yet. Um, but yeah, still working on consistency over there because there's a lot going on over here, as y'all already know. So having that channel, too, is fun, but it's still a lot of work. But anyway, um, he said, I thought this monkey offense was supposed to unleash the passing game, but not at the cost of the run game. Mm. As far as the run game, I think it's been a couple of different things. I think um, expectations were that J.K. Dobbins was going to be the guy. Um, and he was, and he would have fit in this thing. He would have fit in the run game perfectly, but he obviously got hurt. Justice Hill is the next number one guy. It hasn't been Gus Edwards. Um, and Justice Hill fits the, the running game, the scheme, perfectly. Uh, yeah, he, had, he done had a fumble or two, but, yeah. Um, and I think a lot of it is offensive line, too. Uh, the offensive line has been shaky. They've been inconsistent. Uh, they've been hurt off and on. Um, that's been a big part of it as well, uh, the blocking. So 
with the new all, it's, it, we got to remember too. It's a new offense. Now we know we ain't going into week seven, I think. Um, but it's a new offense, and there's still some things being worked out. And we we seen flashes where it's like, oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, they they coming. And then we see other games where it's like, oh yeah, they ain't even close to being there yet. So Ravens will hopefully get there eventually. They just got to fine tune some things. They just got to clean up some things here and there. Um, and, and and this offense can really be explosive. Now they got pretty much all their guys back playing together again. I know Odell's back, Bateman's back. They had Mark Andrews out for a game earlier, um, but they uh, they getting pretty healthy now. So that that's a big part right there. But now it's about putting it all together. Now it's about Todd Munkin calling the right plays, call, having a, a good flow of the game. It's about uh, Lamar Jackson and everybody else just executing everything uh, that's given to them, them making it happen. Um, I, I think uh, well, you, well, you talked about the um, the running game specifically. I, I think when when you do up the passing game, I think it does take away from the running game a bit because you're not running as much. And when you up the passing game, then with the runs – you got to the, the, that, and that's what I thought was going to happen with J.K. Dobbins this year. I thought that he was going to have to be a uh, make the most of his opportunities because he wasn't going to get nearly as many opportunities as he had before uh, because the offense was changing. I expected them to be passing a lot more and J.K. Dobbins and the running back in the company to be getting less lot opportunity a, a lot less opportunities. Excuse me, especially since Ravens like to share the workload. They don't like to have that feature back like that. They like to share the workload. So it's not a surprise. In my opinion, that the the running game, not that the running game is where it's at right now, but it just hasn't been as explosive. And hey, shout out to G Row, man. Two sneaky payments. Next question came from my guy Terry. He said, What's up, Big Raven? Hope you and the fam are doing well. See, there it goes. He said, uh, There's something that I've noticed regarding these two Ravens players. These two Ravens are having the best seasons of their careers, but getting better by the week. It's kind of crazy. These players are performing at a Pro Bowl level. They're also late round draft picks. And while they're playing tremendously, only one can stay. Hopefully, we can sign both. Uh, if you had to choose to sign of these players between the two, who would you pick? And he said Justin Matabike, four and a half sacks, two tackles for losses, and eight QB hits in just six games, or Geno Stone, tied for first in NFL for interceptions at three and three passes defended. He said, hopefully, we can find a way to keep them both, but who would you choose? Thanks, and keep going. Hey, appreciate that, Terry. You already know who the choice would be, especially from the Ravens already. That's what we talked about earlier. Um, but, yeah, it, it'd be Matabike. It'd be Matabike. Matabike, um, he helps make Geno Stone job easier. Geno Stone, I mean, he kind of helps make Matabike's job easier. He can give him some more time. He's covering on the back end, holding it down. Uh, he can give Matabike some more time to rush, but it's, it's, it's Matabike. You already got two good safeties um, in Kyle Hamilton, and even though Kyle Hamilton hasn't been a traditional safety, he's been just a baller. He ain't really been a safety safety. Uh, but you got Marcus Williams, and... Hey, you paid Marcus Williams, right? So I, I would love to. Y'all know me. I want to keep everybody. I want to keep each and everybody, but you just, you simply can't. Uh, so I would go with Matabike. Um, even though it, it's not, but it's not a, it's not even a certainty that either one of these two stays. Both of them been balling. Both of them been doing their thing. But it is no lock that either one of the two stays. And then you throw Patrick Queen in there too. Oof. All three of them could really be gone. Next question came from Jalen. He said, Todd Munkin. What's up, Ingen? Hope all is well with you and the fam. Ah, see, he said it. Uh, I hate that every time the Ravens lose, the mainstream media says the offense is the same this year as it was with Roman. However, there is one alarming similarity that I do see with this offense, situational play calling specifically. I've noticed that when we get up by multiple scores, Munkin begins to call plays very conservatively, and we start getting a lot of three and outs. We'd love to hear your thoughts on this and keep up the great content. Appreciate that, Jalen. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been unfortunate. Um, Ravens have been taking their feet off the gas a lot, a, a whole lot. And we wish they would stop, <laughs> but, hey, I mean, we'll see. But um, it's, it's been rough because Ravens have had opportunities to really just, hey, take these teams out, finish the job. Don't let them come back. Don't let it be close. But they haven't taken full advantage of those opportunities. So, uh, some games are a lot closer than they need to be. Um, we especially we remember last year for sure. Oh my goodness, it was the worst. Um, but this year they they letting those bad habits creep back in, and it's important that they uh, they become self aware and like, hey, we got a problem and we need to fix it. We need to address it and we need to handle it. So hopefully they do. Hopefully they do because I think um, one of the things too has been they they just been being their their biggest 
We're their worst enemy. Uh, like last week in the red zone, they had, I think, what, five or six trips to the red zone? They kicked all them field goals. They did score one touchdown, but they kicked a bunch of field goals, man. Like, what's going on? My thing, I, I just, the, the, the toss plays, and the, it, again, it's just my opinion. It's just me. I don't, I don't know football coach or expert or anything like that, but them toss plays in the red zone, especially, like, close by the goal line, like, you got Gus Edwards, man. You ain't got to get pretty with it. Just get nasty. Run that thing straight up, man. You got Gus Edwards. You got Pat Ricard ready to block somebody. Pat Ricard like, hey, let me let me get him. Let me get him. He like scrappy dude. So run that thing up the gut, man. And I, I know it don't always work, but um, it's just, I don't know, sometimes it's just weird, man. Like, I think last week against the Titans, they they were like hardly not throwing in the red zone at all, uh, especially by the goal line. And then the previous week, they were only, I forgot what it was, but they just, they got to get a better feel in crunch time and in the red zone because moving the ball hasn't been this consistent issue so that's a good thing but now you got to work on finishing next question came from my guy bb he said do you think the patriots should trade two first round picks for justin fields oh no not at all why no uh-uh two first round picks for justin fields no he has been playing better over the past couple of weeks but two first round no no you could offer some, but I mean that would officially if Justin. Well, he's hurt now anyway, so you can't trade for him now anyway. But um, if he was healthy, uh, I would like I send him like a second or third. Not no two first round picks. Uh, but anyway, he said Bears are vulnerable and are looking for an answer. We know uh, Hoodie is known for developing players and using them to their strengths. Patriots may trade Mac Jones to sweeten that deal. That way, Chicago would have a somewhat tested quarterback for the rest of the season. Your thoughts. Oh, so them doing a QB swap. See, but what? look what you just said. You said, we know Hoodie is known for developing players and using them to their strengths. But what's up with Mac Jones?